Space and Science News with James. In a world where our devices constantly demand power, the solution may be closer than we think, right beneath our skin. Your smartwatch could run on the warmth of your wrist, and your phone might charge itself from the heat in your pocket. It sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? But in a lab in Brisbane, Australia, a team of scientists has turned this dream into reality. Today, we'll be talking about a breakthrough in thermoelectric technology that could change the way we power our world. Why? Because why not revolutionize energy as we know it? Professor Zhi Gang Chen holds up a thin, flexible film. This, he says, is the future of portable power. But what makes this unassuming material so special? How does it work? And what could it mean for our technology, our environment, and our daily lives? From medical implants that never need battery replacement to buildings that generate electricity from the sun's warmth, the possibilities are mind-boggling. But challenges remain. Can this technology be scaled up? What are the limitations? Let's dive deep into this subject of body heat-powered devices and uncover the science that could reshape our relationship with energy. In a world increasingly dependent on portable electronics, the quest for sustainable power sources has led researchers to an unexpected yet abundant resource, our own body heat. On a crisp winter morning in Brisbane, Australia, Professor Zhi Gang Chen of Queensland University of Technology stands in his laboratory, holding what appears to be a simple sheet of plastic film. But this unassuming material represents a monumental leap in wearable technology. What we have here, Professor Chen explains, his eyes gleaming with excitement, is the culmination of years of research, an ultra-thin, flexible film capable of converting body heat into electricity. He gently flexes the film between his fingers, demonstrating its pliability. This isn't just about powering smartwatches or fitness trackers. We're talking about a fundamental shift in how we think about energy for portable devices. The implications of this breakthrough extend far beyond the realm of personal gadgets. Imagine a future where your smartphone never needs charging, where medical implants draw power from your own body, or where the heat from your laptop actually helps to power it. This isn't science fiction, it's the promise of thermoelectric technology. As Professor Chin sets the film down on his workbench, he reflects on the journey that led to this moment. We've known about the thermoelectric effect for nearly two centuries, he says, but harnessing it efficiently, especially in a flexible form, has been a tremendous challenge. Until now. The film developed by Professor Chen and his team represents a groundbreaking fusion of nanotechnology, material science, and innovative manufacturing techniques. It embodies the collaborative spirit of modern scientific research and showcases humanity's unwavering commitment to solving complex global energy challenges through creative, interdisciplinary approaches. But how does this remarkable material work? And what does it mean for the future of technology and sustainability? As we delve deeper into the science behind this breakthrough, we'll uncover a story of innovation, perseverance, and the transformative potential of harnessing the energy that surrounds us every day. To understand the significance of this breakthrough, we need to journey into the microscopic world of thermoelectric materials. At its core, the technology relies on a phenomenon known as the Seebeck effect, named after the German physicist Thomas Johann Seebeck who first observed it in 1821. Dr. Shao a key member of Professor Chen's team, explains the principle, when there's a temperature difference between two sides of certain materials, it creates a voltage. Essentially, we're converting heat directly into electricity. She points to a diagram on her computer screen, showing electrons flowing from the hot side of a material to the cold side. But while the principle is straightforward, implementing it effectively has been anything but. Traditional thermoelectric materials like bismuth telluride are rigid and brittle, making them unsuitable for wearable applications. The challenge lay in creating a material that was not only efficient at converting heat to electricity but also flexible enough to conform to the human body. This is where the team's innovative approach comes into play. We've developed a method using nanobinders, Dr. Sher continues, zooming in on a molecular model. These tiny crystals form consistent layers of bismuth telluride sheets, dramatically improving both efficiency and flexibility. The manufacturing process is equally ingenious, combining techniques from different fields. It starts with solvathermal synthesis, where nanocrystals are formed in a solvent under high temperature and pressure. This is followed by screen printing, a method borrowed from the textile industry, allowing for large-scale production of the film. The final step is sintering, adds Mr. Winnie Chen, the first author of the study. 
he gestures towards a specialized oven in the corner of the lab. We heat the films to near melting point, causing the particles to bond together without losing their nanostructure. The result is a material that outperforms previous flexible thermoelectrics by orders of magnitude. But the team didn't stop at bismuth telluride. We've also explored other systems, like silver selenide, Mr. Chen explains. These materials are potentially cheaper and more sustainable, opening up even more possibilities. As impressive as the science is, its real impact lies in its potential applications. From powering medical implants to cooling computer chips, this technology could transform multiple industries. And as we'll see, its effects could ripple out to influence everything from personal health to global energy consumption. The potential applications of this flexible thermoelectric film are as diverse as they are revolutionary. Professor Matthew Dargush, a collaborator from the University of Queensland, helps paint a picture of the future this technology could enable. Let's start with wearable devices, he begins, holding up a prototype smartwatch. Current models need charging every few days. With our technology, they could potentially run indefinitely, powered by your body heat. But the implications go far beyond convenience. For people with medical conditions requiring constant monitoring, this could be life-changing. Imagine glucose monitors for diabetics or heart rate monitors for cardiac patients that never need charging or battery replacement. The technology's impact on personal electronics could be equally transformative. Think about your smartphone or laptop, Professor Dargush continues. They generate a lot of heat, which is currently just wasted energy. Our film could not only harness that heat to extend battery life but also help cool the devices, improving performance and longevity. In the realm of medical implants, the potential is particularly exciting. Dr. Meng Li, another team member, explains, pacemakers, cochlear implants, neural stimulators, all of these currently rely on batteries that need surgical replacement every few years. Our technology could potentially power these devices indefinitely using the patient's own body heat, dramatically reducing risks and improving quality of life. But the applications extend beyond personal devices. Professor Jean Zhou from the University of Queensland envisions broader implications, imagine integrating this technology into buildings. You could have walls that capture heat differentials between inside and outside, contributing to the building's energy needs. Or think about vehicles, capturing waste heat from engines to power onboard electronics. The environmental impact could be substantial. By reducing reliance on batteries, the technology could significantly decrease electronic waste. Moreover, by harnessing waste heat in various applications, it could contribute to overall energy efficiency on a global scale. However, as with any new technology, there are challenges to overcome. We're still working on optimizing the manufacturing process for large-scale production, admits Professor Chen. And there are questions about long-term durability and performance in various environmental conditions that we're actively researching. Despite these challenges, the potential of this technology to reshape our relationship with portable energy is undeniable. As we continue to push the boundaries of what's possible, we move closer to a world where the energy we need is always at our fingertips, or more accurately, flowing through our veins. To fully appreciate the significance of this breakthrough, it's crucial to understand the historical context of thermoelectric research. Professor Gao Ching Max Lu from the University of Surrey, a collaborator on the project, takes us on a journey through time. The story of thermoelectrics begins in the early 19th century, Professor Lu explains, pointing to a timeline on his office wall. In 1821, Thomas Seebeck discovered that a temperature difference between two different metals could produce electricity. Just a few years later, in 1834, Jean Charles Athanasi Peltier observed the inverse effect that an electric current could produce a temperature difference. These discoveries laid the groundwork for thermoelectric technology, but practical applications remained limited for over a century. The real breakthrough came in the 1950s, Professor Lu continues, when Abram Yaffe developed the modern theory of semiconducting thermoelectrics. This led to the first practical thermoelectric devices, primarily used in niche applications like space exploration. Despite these advances, thermoelectric materials remained rigid and brittle, limiting their use in everyday applications. Many researchers tried to create flexible thermoelectrics, says Professor Liu, but they faced significant challenges. The materials either weren't efficient enough or lost their thermoelectric properties when made flexible. He shows us a collection of samples from previous attempts, thin films that crumble at the slightest bend, 
others that are flexible but produce negligible power. It was a classic materials science problem, he explains. We needed something with seemingly contradictory properties, the electrical characteristics of a rigid semiconductor but the mechanical properties of a flexible polymer. Various approaches were tried over the years. Some researchers experimented with organic materials, others with composite structures. There were incremental improvements, Professor Liu acknowledges, but nothing that really solved the fundamental challenge. This historical context highlights why the current breakthrough is so significant. By using nanobinders to create consistent layers of bismuth telluride sheets, Professor Chen's team has achieved what many thought impossible, a material that is both highly efficient and highly flexible. It's a testament to the power of interdisciplinary research, Professor Liu concludes. This breakthrough combines insights from materials science, nanotechnology, chemistry, and engineering. It's the culmination of nearly two centuries of scientific inquiry and innovation. As we reflect on this rich history, we're reminded that today's breakthrough is built on the foundation laid by generations of scientists and engineers. And just as their work has led to this moment, this current innovation opens doors to future advancements we can only begin to imagine. The journey from laboratory breakthrough to commercially viable product is often long and challenging. Professor Zhi Gang Chen and his team are well aware of this as they work to scale up production of their revolutionary thermoelectric film. The manufacturing process we've developed is key to the scalability of this technology, Professor Chen explains as he leads us through the production facility. The first step involves the solvathermal synthesis of nanocrystals. In a large pressure vessel, precursor materials are combined with a solvent and subjected to high temperature and pressure. This process gives us precise control over the size and shape of the nanocrystals, he notes, which is crucial for the film's performance. Next, we move to the screen printing area. Here, the nanocrystal solution is applied to a flexible substrate using a method similar to t-shirt printing. Screen printing allows us to produce large sheets of the film quickly and consistently, says Dr. Shaolaisher. We can easily adjust the thickness and pattern of the film, which gives us flexibility in designing for different applications. The final step in the process is sintering. The printed films are carefully heated in a specialized oven, causing the nanoparticles to bond together without losing their crucial nanostructure. This is perhaps the most delicate part of the process, Mr. Winnie Chen admits. We need to heat the film enough to create strong bonds, but not so much that we lose the nanostructure that gives the material its unique properties. While the current setup is capable of producing A4-sized sheets, the team is already working on scaling up. We're in talks with industrial partners to adapt this process for roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing, Professor Chen reveals. This would allow us to produce the film in much larger quantities, potentially by the meter. However, scaling up presents its own challenges. Maintaining consistent quality over larger areas is one hurdle, Dr. Schur explains. We're also working on optimizing the process to reduce production time and costs. Despite these challenges, the team is optimistic about the potential for large-scale production. The beauty of our approach is that it uses relatively common materials and established manufacturing techniques, Professor Chin points out. This makes it much easier to scale up compared to more exotic materials or processes. The ability to manufacture this film at scale is crucial for its widespread adoption. As production increases and costs decrease, we could see this technology integrated into a wide range of products, from clothing to building materials. It's a future where harvesting energy from temperature differences could become as common as solar panels are today. As we stand on the brink of this technological revolution, it's worth considering the broader implications of widespread thermoelectric technology. Professor Jean Zhou offers his perspective on the global impact. Energy harvesting from waste heat could be a game-changer in our fight against climate change, he begins. Industrial processes, transportation, even our own bodies, there's heat being wasted everywhere. Capturing even a fraction of this could significantly reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. Indeed, the potential applications seem limitless. In the automotive industry, thermoelectric generators could capture waste heat from engines, improving fuel efficiency. In industrial settings, they could turn waste heat from furnaces and boilers into usable electricity. Even in our homes, they could harvest heat from appliances or temperature differentials between indoors and outdoors. But the implications go beyond energy efficiency. Dr. Mengli points out the potential in healthcare, in developing regions with limited access to electricity, this technology could power vital medical equipment using just body heat. 
it could revolutionize field medicine and improve healthcare access in remote areas. The environmental impact could be substantial. By reducing reliance on batteries, the technology could significantly decrease electronic waste. Moreover, by harnessing waste heat in various applications, it could contribute to overall energy efficiency on a global scale. However, challenges remain. We're still working on optimizing the manufacturing process for large-scale production, admits Professor Chen. And there are questions about long-term durability and performance in various environmental conditions that we're actively researching. Despite these challenges, the potential of this technology to reshape our relationship with portable energy is undeniable. As we continue to push the boundaries of what's possible, we move closer to a world where the energy we need is always at our fingertips, or more accurately, flowing through our veins. The breakthrough in thermoelectric technology represents more than just a scientific achievement, it's a glimpse into a future where energy is everywhere, waiting to be captured. From the heat radiating from our bodies to the waste warmth of industrial processes, we're standing at the precipice of an energy revolution that could fundamentally transform how we think about power. Professor Zhi Gang Chen and his team have demonstrated that innovation isn't about grand, sweeping gestures, but about persistent curiosity and the willingness to reimagine what's possible. Their work shows us that solutions to complex global challenges often emerge from the most unexpected places, in this case, a thin, flexible film that can turn body heat into electricity. But this is just the beginning. The road from laboratory breakthrough to widespread technological implementation is long and complex. Challenges in manufacturing, scaling, and real-world performance remain. Yet, the potential benefits are extraordinary, reduced electronic waste, more sustainable energy generation, and technologies that work in harmony with our natural systems. To the researchers pushing boundaries, to the curious minds always asking what if, and to everyone watching who believes in the power of human innovation, this is for you. Science isn't just about understanding the world, it's about changing it. If you found this exploration fascinating, hit that subscribe button. Drop a comment below about which potential application excites you most. And stay tuned for more deep dives into the technologies that are reshaping our world. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and never stop wondering about the incredible potential that surrounds us. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, and click that notification bell so you never miss out. See you next week.